Surgical treatment of calcaneal fractures This video has been produced from a book source that is shown below. I thank the editors, Walter Dagino, Alessandro Mass, and Daniele Marcoli. Citation, Dagino Walter, Mass Alessandro, Marcoli Daniele. Foot and Ankle Trauma Injuries, Atlas of Surgical Procedures. Springer. Reduction Maneuvers and Synthesis. To achieve the reduction, the keystone is the surgical anatomy of the sustentaculum tally, which usually keeps its original link with the talus, thanks to the action of the strong interosseous talo-calcaneal ligament, this bone segment becomes the fixed point that drives the progressive reconstruction of the joint anatomy and later will represent a safe target to aim the screws to achieve a solid fixation. The procedure begins with the mobilization of the sunken osteochondral fragments to gain access to the medial wall of the calcaneus. If the fracture has two articular fragments, it can be enough to rotate the sunken part of the subtalar joint after having it separated from the surrounding bone fragments, while in case of a Sanders III fracture, it is usually necessary to remove both of the displaced fragments, central and lateral, proceeding to anatomically restore them on the surgical table, stabilizing them with absorbable poly-L-lactic acid, PLLA, pins. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture, once the lateral wall and the lateral and central subtalar joint fragments have been removed, it is possible to gain access to the medial wall, and it is possible to achieve a reduction. The procedure begins with the mobilization of the sunken osteochondral fragments to gain access to the medial wall of the calcaneus. If the fracture has two articular fragments, it can be enough to rotate the sunken part of the subtalar joint after having it separated from the surrounding bone fragments, while in case of a Sanders III fracture, it is usually necessary to remove both of the displaced fragments, central and lateral, proceeding to anatomically restore them on the surgical table, stabilizing them with absorbable poly-L-lactic acid, PLLA, pins. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. In case of three articular fragment fractures, the lateral fragment and the central one are more conveniently controlled by removing them and providing an anatomical reduction on the serving table. Once a temporary fixation is achieved with Kirchner wires, B, some PLLA pins are inserted to unite the fragments, previously drilled with a dedicate drill bit, C, and at the end cut flush to the bone, D. If there is a dislocation of the medial wall, at this point, the interpenetrated fragments in this area are freed, using a lever inserted at the apex of the deformity, see figure, previously spotted during preoperative planning and eventually later using a laminar spreader to increase gradually the distraction force applied. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture, reduction of the medial wall, with the use of a lever, the impacted fragments are freed, and consequently a specific lateral, medial translation combined with a varus valgus solicitation is applied to restore the correct position of the posterior tuberosity in line with the bony segment and realign the medial profile of the calcaneus. Considering the landmarks of the deformity deducted from the preoperative planning, once freed from the impaction of the medial wall due to the impact of the posterior tuberosity, the latter is rotated and shifted opposite to the varus valgus and procurvatum recurvatum generated by the trauma, repositioning it along the original axis and temporarily stabilizing it, with 2 mm Kirchner wires, from the posterior tuberosity to the sustentaculum tally, see figure, and eventually further onto the talus to gain a better temporary stability. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. Once the medial wall of the calcaneus is reduced, a temporary stabilization with 2 mm Kirchner wires is performed. Once the medial side is reduced, it is possible to proceed to the reduction of the lateral fragment, 
single or reconstructed, of the subtalar joint. If the reduction obtained is good, the latter finds its spatial collocation easily, and it fits in its area with a click, restoring the Gusane angle. Even this reduction is temporarily stabilized with at least two 1.6 mm Kirchner wires, C fig, and it is checked under fluoroscopy. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. Once the medial wall is restored, the residual space is enough to reposition the osteochondral fragment previously rebuilt, which is going to be inserted and temporarily stabilized with 1.6 mm Kirchner wires, at least two. If everything is okay, the subtalar joint is fixed through two free-handed compression screws, carefully orientating the latter from posterior to anterior and proximal to distal, to achieve a good grip on the sustentaculum tally strong bone and to mainly avoid the accidental interpenetration of the screws in the joint, considering the obliquity of the subtalar joint line, see figure, otherwise and in a more difficult manner, even if less time-consuming, the screws that fix the subtalar joint can be inserted directly on the plate, keeping the insertion point a little lower, mostly for the locking screws, which have a fixed direction. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. When the screws are inserted in proximity of the subtalar joint line, which are going to be inserted with an anterior direction aiming to the sustentaculum tally, it must be considered the lateral to medial obliquity of the subtalar joint, aiming the holes oblique or starting lower as inserting point, pink arrows, to avoid accidental intra-articular penetration, blue arrow. The osteosynthesis must be performed through the use of the thinnest plate possible to minimize the impact on the soft tissues, but, keeping in mind this attribute, it is more advisable to use a rigid plate not bendable, such as the LCP synthes. Even if they require a more precise surgical technique for the positioning, it is important to use titanium devices, because they seem to be less attractive for bacteria and more suitable to reduce problems if there is an infection. This plate is anatomical for the side. In the classic version it needs to be modeled, cutting of eventual holes not needed, adapting it to the bone anatomy, thanks to a plastic phantom, that is used as guide, see figure. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. The soft mask is adapted to the lateral wall of the calcaneus after the temporary fixation is achieved. It will serve as a guide to achieve the best modeling of the definitive plate. The plate holes accept both conventional and locking screws, the latter increasing notably the stability of the synthesis. The screws, diameters 2.7 and 3.5 mm, must be positioned in the areas where there is the best bone grasp, which are the anterior and posterior tuberosity and the subtalar joint. If a combination of locking and conventional screws is used, the normal screws must be placed before the locking ones, to avoid any accidental loosening of the latter. It is advisable to insert in every of the three valid grasp points one conventional screw, to adapt the plate to the bone in all its parts, reducing the mass effect of the device. Further on, the synthesis is completed through the insertion of at least three locking screws, always one per segment, increasing the overall stability, see figure. ORIF of a calcaneal fracture. After the synthes LCP plate is modeled, the osteosynthesis is perfected, inserting at least two screws for every good quality bone zone, which are represented by the posterior subtalar joint and the anterior and posterior tuberosity. As a rule, to avoid loss of reduction, it is essential to position the screws bicortically, gaining grasp on the medial wall, achieving strength and mechanical validity. The main advantage of using a rigid and anatomic plate is that, if it adapts flush to the lateral wall of the reconstructed calca noise, mainly straight, without the need of any bending on its main side, it represents an indirect index of the good realignment of the medial wall, allowing to avoid the axial view of the calcaneus during the fluoroscopy check, earning time and avoiding excessive dorsiflexion solicitations to the foot.
The surgery is completed through the closure of the wound through single stitches of the deep soft tissues with an absorbable 3.0 suture and a continuous single thread 3.0 or 4.0 skin suture. This continuous suture will tension by itself once the tourniquet is released, avoiding mechanical stresses in single spots. With the growing experience of the surgeon and the use of optimized instrumentation, it is possible to constantly keep the tourniquet time under the 2.5H, preventing the removal of the tourniquet before the ending of the surgery. This is essential because releasing the tourniquet once the suture is ended, an elastic dressing is completed and an open plaster cast is positioned avoids to develop any tensioning on the incision and to contemporarily perform effective hemostasis, reducing at minimum any sufferance of the soft tissues. This video has been produced from a book source that is shown below. I thank the editors, Walter Dagino, Alessandro Mass, and Daniele Marcoli. Citation, Dagino Walter, Mass Alessandro, Marcoli Daniele. Foot and Ankle Trauma Injuries, Atlas of Surgical Procedures. Springer.